Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. It is Friday, September 9th, and today's episode is a little bit different in that we aren't actually doing this live because the device that I use to go live is the device that I want to demonstrate, and that is the Teradek VDU Pro. And I can't actually get into the menu settings while it's broadcasting live, hence the pre-recorded slash live show. Anyway, what we want to do is talk about this guy here, the Teradek VDU Pro, which I have finally got working properly on Facebook. As many of you have seen, I've been broadcasting live over Facebook for quite a while now using this device, and we've had all kinds of issues, all kinds of resolution oddities, dropouts. We've seen our resolution drop from 720p down to 640 when it looked awful. We had audio sync issues, just all kinds of problems. And what I finally figured out was that all I had to do was lower the settings of the Teradek VDU so that it matched more closely to what Facebook is expecting. Now, I'm a little frustrated that within the VDU settings, it doesn't actually say anything like this is the maximum for Facebook or even this is the ideal for Facebook. It allows you to go way beyond what Facebook will take, which is the problem. So we're going to take a look at the settings. We're also going to look at the web pages where all the data is, which frankly took me a long time to find. But now that I've got that, I'm going to share that with you so you can see exactly where it is. And hopefully with a little bit of pressure on Teradek, we can get some settings in here that are a little bit better, a little bit more closely aligned with what Facebook's expecting. So let's get into it. First of all, this is the device. You can see it here, nice up and close and personal. And we're looking at the front of the device here. It has two basic buttons on it, your start and stop, and your menu buttons on there. You have a display interface that tells you what's going on, and a few status lights over on the side. There's also an SD card slot here so that you can actually store your show on an SD card and just drop that in there. And then when you record it, whatever you are broadcasting is going to record directly to there in that same format. You could also put in a USB port, a USB memory stick on the side there, but I always use the SD card. So to configure this thing, you can do it a couple ways. You can go through this menu system here. However, this is tedious. Uh, you know, there's your broadcast settings, what's your quality, your platform, and then especially when you get into things like entering passwords and so on, this could be really, really hard to do. So we're not going to do the majority of the work here, but we are going to come back to here for one point in the setting, one thing I do want to show you. The majority of where we're going to look, though, is in the iPhone itself, because the iPhone, on the iPhone, and I pretty sure on Android as well, you have an app that allows you to control the video. So that's what we want to take a look at. So let's look at the iPhone app here. All right, so right now we're looking at the, the main screen of the video application. You can see it shows devices that it's found, and there's the device in there. You can see me on there on delay. Uh, you show the IP address and so on. If I tap on that, it will take us into the settings for this. So here we're going to see my video coming up again. It says connection's been found. Thank you very much. You have up on the top here, you have the ability to mute that out. I don't know why the image is distorted here. It's always been that way. It's a little bit weird, but it's irrelevant. It, it's actually going to be broadcasting properly. If I was just all set and ready to go, I could hit the big green button that would start streaming right now. But that's not what I want to do. I want to go into the settings. Now, in the settings, you have a bunch of different things. You've got your broadcast settings. And from here, you have quality and platform. If I go to platform, you'll see all the different platforms you can stream to. And of course, what we're talking about here is Facebook, which is already selected. If I tap on the cog on there, this is where I'd log into my account. I could set the name of the show if I wanted to customize that. But I've also figured out that you can go in and customize the name of the show on Facebook once it started streaming without interrupting things. So you just edit the post that's on Facebook and you can change the name of the show or, or put whatever you want in there which is really helpful because, frankly, going into here, typing it out each time, it's multiple steps to get into it, a little bit more tedious. Um, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't include links or, or tags, basically. You couldn't tag anybody in Facebook this way. But if you start your broadcast and then go to your Facebook page and modify the post where you're streaming to live, then you can do that. And this is why, uh, this is why I'm now, one of the many reasons why I now do a countdown once I start streaming live. See, Facebook doesn't allow you yet, and hopefully this will change, but they don't allow you to replace a video or even trim a video. And replacing, I get. You know, you don't want to replace a video, but trimming a video would be really handy because there's no staging room right now. So actually backing up a bit, that's the, that's the first problem. There's no staging room. There's no way for me to say, I'm going to be going live here in five minutes, count down or just say, I'll be here soon, and then start the live broadcast. Basically, I have to start the live broadcast, and that's the only way that something shows up on Facebook. And then I can go in and share that. Well, if I start the live show and then start sharing it, by the time it gets shared and people sign in to watch it, I will have already started. There'll be a couple minutes into the show, they'll have missed something. So I've begun doing what many other broadcasters are doing on Facebook, and that is 
start broadcasting, but I have a countdown clock. Show will start in five minutes, four minutes. You see it counting down by the seconds, and then I can watch the clock and I can stay right ready to go, turn that off, and then start the show. By then, it's we have time to go in and edit the post if you want to. See so if you want to tag people, change the name of it, whatever. You can do that. You can share it to other pages, to your personal page, whatever, to your wall, whatever it may be. And of course, people have time to come in and see the show without actually missing the beginning of it. So anyway, um, that's why we do the whole countdown clock thing in there. But Facebook, unfortunately, doesn't allow us to go in and trim that out at the end. So usually when you're watching one of these live videos, you'll see the countdown clock. And even if you're playing it after the fact, you still have to get through the countdown clock. At least you can scrub through it. It's obviously you know where it's counting down. You can drag through to zero and start, but a little bit tedious. Anyway, that uh, went off topic there a little bit, but let's get back to this thing. So there's the title in there. Uh, again, I just leave it all the same thing all the time. So let's just go ahead and back out. Quality is where this thing really comes to play. This is, this is what you need to know to do this right on Facebook. You'll see that you have video, audio, and frame rate all set up separately. If I go into video, you see full HD, HD+, HD high, medium, low, and mobile. What the heck are those? What's the resolution? What's the bit rate? I don't know. It doesn't tell you here. That's just a little bit frustrating. So if you look at the device itself, we, if we look at the front of this, here we can see the bit rate. So I'm going to go into the menu, broadcast settings, and quality. So we're going to the same place, and then video. From here, I can see that full HD is 5 megabit, HD plus is 3 megabit, HD is 2.1, high is 1.4, medium 700 kilobit, and low is 350, oh, and then mobile 225. So you can go really low. And the suggest, by the way, will simply run a speed test and then determine what is the, uh, the optimum speed for your current internet bandwidth, which is fine if you're going live to something other than Facebook. If it's Facebook, though, you want to pick uh, the fixed consistent thing. OK, so back to this thing. Um, Actually, let's go back to this guy real quick. So you have these settings in here, which again, this is the only place in the interface that you will see what the actual bit rate is. Notice that this is not telling you the resolution. So very, very important little piece of information that is not being shown here. Oh, well, so full HD, HD+, HD, and so on. All right, so let's go back to the app here. So again, full HD, HD+, HD, and so on. Those are the settings we have. All right, so we know what the bit rate is because it tells us on here, but what is the actual resolution? For that, we're going to go to the web. So let's switch over to my computer. And you'll see here, I've got two pages loaded. I have the Teradek Video Pro Technical Specs page, which let me tell you, it took some time to find this because this page is not available until you go to buy the thing. Click through a couple different buy buttons, and then you get to a page that has technical specs. So the, the I'm going to show you a shortcut URL to get here later, so don't worry about that. Um, but this is the page. You've got your basic, it's going to load to the overview. Go to technical specs, and here you have all these. And by the way, this, you'll notice right now I'm running Chrome. Usually I'm in Safari. Uh, this page here does not load in Safari. So joy to that. Go to Chrome and this will load. And what you're looking for is video processing. And under here we see supported video bit rates and supported output resolution. So video bit rates. Here's the same information we just saw. Full HD 5.2, HD 2.2, high 1.4, and so on. Um, notice something's missing in here. The HD Plus isn't even in here. It's like it doesn't exist. I don't know why they've chosen. Let's go back to this screen. So you've got HD Plus here, but it doesn't show up on the website. Great. So I don't even know what that is. Well, I know from looking at the interface on here that HD Plus is 3 megabit. OK, so that's 3.0 megabit. That sounds good. Um, 3 megabits, pretty good amount of data. All right, so keep that in mind. Remember that. That's 3 megabits there. But what's the resolution? OK, let's go back to the, the computer here. So output resolutions, full HD, 1920 by 1080. Yay, HD. HD, 1280 uh, by 720, and then down, down, down from there. Again, HD plus is missing. HD plus is a mystery. Now, I found this. Um, what I had to do was record something, basically do a live broadcast from the device, save it, and then look at it. And it's something between the two. And I don't remember what the numbers are now, but it was like, 14 something by 12, so I don't know. It's some weird resolution. It's not a standard HD resolution. That's what HD plus is. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's over 720p, below 1080p, something in there. OK, let's go back to the computer. So there's our available resolutions. OK, well, what does Facebook actually want? So for this, we need the Facebook setup page. Now, this again, I have a shortcut I'll show you in a moment. But this is the Facebook Live page that shows you all the data that you need to know how to stream live. Over here, uh, you'll see a jump to. You can jump all the way down to live video specs, or you can just scroll down to it. And here's the all-important resolution data. So we accept video 
and maximum of 720p resolution. And it says at 30 frames per second. Now I'm broadcasting at 24 frames per second and that's not a problem. So I would say this basically means a max of 30 because 24 is not a problem. But max video is 720p. That is really important because what that is telling me is that if I send something greater than 720p, Facebook is going to scale it down. And this was the crux of all the problems that I was having. I was sending 1080p video out of this with the expectation that, that Facebook was going to scale it down fine. Well, it did scale it down, but it didn't do it fine. It was doing two things. It was breaking the signal and often losing sync on the audio, and it was scaling it all the way down to a 640 wide image instead of 1280 wide. Oops, so half the resolution of what I wanted. Um, and I'm not even fully convinced at this point that what I'm getting on Facebook is full 720p. You'll see now on the, on the newer streams, um, on the last live stream I did before this one where I finally got this right, You'll see now that you finally have a resolution selector and it shows 720p, but I have the ability as the owner of that to download the video. And when I say download HD, it's still only 640 wide. So it's not downloading the full 1280 by 720, but at least it shows 720. It definitely looks better. So we're just hoping, kind of hoping that that's what we're actually seeing on there. Anyways, go back to the computer. So maximum resolution 720. Okay, so that shows us that we have to have uh, HD is the best we can do. We cannot do HD plus or full HD. All right, what else do we know? We also know that we have a mix maximum bit rate of 4,000 kilobit. Okay, well, HD on the Teradex, there's our HD setting, is 2 megabit, 2.2 megabit. So we have a long way to go. Now, full HD at 5.2 would be too much, but HD plus, as we know from looking over at the screen here, we know that HD plus is 3 megabit. Well, that's better than 2.2, it still isn't 4. So it'd be great if we could do HD plus, but you can't. You cannot mix, right? You you have one setting. Video is HD, HD plus, or full HD, which means video is uh, 1280 by 720, 720p at 2.2 megabit, or HD plus is whatever that weird resolution is at 3 megabit, or full HD 1920 by 1080 at 5 megabit. You cannot mix these up. So the best thing that we can select inside of uh, inside of the VDU settings is HD because HD is going to give us that 1280 by 720, but only at 2.2 megabit. So we've got room to grow here. So Teradek, please go in here and make an H, make a Facebook specific setting. Give us our full four megabit. Give us our full four megabit at 1280 by 720, and then we can optimize the quality of our stream and get something better out there using this thousand dollar device. If I can spend a thousand dollars on something, I want it to work the way it's supposed to work. This is really frustrating, guys. Please fix this, change this. Okay, back to it. So uh, back to the screen here. So again, we know that HD 2.2, uh, 1280 by 720, that's our maximum. Uh, everything else in here is not really relevant to our settings except uh, audio. Audio shows audio sample rate of 44.1 at a bit rate of 128 kilobits. So now we're looking at the same thing. If we go back over to the device, back out of the video settings, go to the audio set, oops, wrong screen. There we go. Back out of the video settings. So here I was in here. I backed out of video, went into audio. Audio, again, you have HD, high, medium, low, mobile, and auto. All right, well, what does that actually mean? Once again, we don't see that information on here. Uh, I actually don't know if we see that on the screen. Let's find out. Let me go back out of here. Audio, medium. Yeah, so we do see this here. High, 192, medium, 128. Well, we just saw that looking at the computer specs, we have an audio bit rate of 128 kilobit. So that tells us that our audio setting has to be set to medium on the video pro. So at least at least that's a little bit easier. We know that we have to have our audio set to medium. Uh, and that's going to give us what we need 128. It's the video that's a big question. <sighs> Crazy, right? So that's really it. Let's go back to this. This is the key right here. So video, you have to set it to HD and not HD plus or full HD, or you're going to mess up your stream. And audio, you have to set to medium again, or you're going to mess up your stream. So, so HD and medium, those are your settings. That's what you need if you're going to stream live to Facebook using this device here. I told you I'd show you some shortcuts. Let's go back over here to the screen. So if you go to photojoseph.com slash FB live dash settings, that'll take you to the Facebook live settings. And then photojoseph.com slash video dash settings to take you to the video settings page. So I hope that's helpful for you. Jot those down. Um, I will include these in the links on the show notes, uh, on the, the comments, but those are the ones that you need to make that work. Alrighty. I hope this is helpful to somebody out there. Again, if you are a Teradek and watching this, please make these changes. We really need to see these changes in there. 
I'm going to leave you with a parting little thing to say, please, if you enjoy this type of training, please check out my photography 101 course on lynda.com. Photojoseph.com slash photo 101 will take you there. There's also a 10 day free trial if you're not already a Lynda member, photojoseph.com slash Lynda to get that 10 day free trial. This is my latest and greatest photography training course, photo 101. It's all the basics of photography. What's an aperture? What's a shutter speed? What's an ISO? How do they work against each other? When do you use this mode and that mode? Plus some creative composition type tips as well. It's a really fun, informative video. If you are new to photography, you need this. Even if you are used to cameras, you've been shooting for a long time, but you're really not quite sure what all the buttons on your cameras do, check this video out. I think you'll learn a lot from that. All right, folks, that's it for me. Thanks for tuning in to this not live show of Photojustice Photo Moment, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.